like you really feel like wow your finger like your whole body turns numb when you see it, it's her like i've been seeing a lot of like homophobic and transphobic like comments on my tiktok and stuff mm. like that and they are just saying like uh i cannot accept la, like you know i don't understand that kind of thing like who's asking you to ask understand like i i, I don't understand uh, mm. Tamil, right? I don't understand Hindi, right? But doesn't mean that I cannot have empathy for like an Indian person. So if you are very angry with I... whatever I say, okay, <laughs> leave leave it in the comment. You know, I I totally appreciate it because it's engagement you know, for me. Yes, you know what? I thought I thought we stopped recording like <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> like It's a funny story. At least it is to me. Hello, it's me again. I'm Kai Kai. <laughs> I have with me two of my actors from I Am Part 3. I have Kavita. She Hi. played Julie. And I have <laughs> Benedict and he played David, Hi. the transphobic father. I don't care whether he wants to do it or not. He needs to man up. And not have his father talk to him like a human, right? Yeah, just to give a background, like uh, Kavita actually applied for the <laughs> second just for, like for part to two. Bring that up. Yeah, she actually applied for part two. And uh, I mean like I saw her show and it was impressive but um, she, she didn't really fit like what I was envisioning for the, the second one But I immediately uh, already um, thought that she can, can fit like the third one So I did a direct casting of Kavita for the third film I think like one of the things that you like Kavita told me was something about the whole um, Casting based on race. I have to compete with this big pool of female actors, and on top of that, it's it's difficult for me because as someone who's an Indian, and I look through like the Facebook casting page or, or something, and everywhere I see, I see like Chinese, 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 and one Indian, and I'm like, wow, oh, sixty to seventy year old, <laughs> like Chinese, Chinese. Oh, Chinese slash Pan Asian. Okay, maybe maybe I can apply for this. And then you know the cycle just goes on. So it was. It's very hard for me to digest this because for as long as I can remember, that acting is something I thought I wanted to do. I kind of knew like that's my calling in a way. But I feel like in Singapore, at the current state it is in now, you know where people really do a lot of casting based on race there's not much hope for me <laughs> to do this as a full-time job um, I've been at it for like two years and really if this is the only thing I'm doing I will not be able to make ends meet yeah so it's a bit sad so when I get like casting calls you know I, I absolutely love casting calls when there is no need for uh, race specific um, character mm. yeah that's the best right I mean not all the time you really need like a Chinese character to play a um, certain role or character so that's great I think a lot of times like a Chinese is casted because oh okay majority of people are Chinese here and um, so maybe like they want to see more Chinese people but what about the rest of us we also live here we were born here and I think if it's like a generic kind of role where we are talking about lifestyle, just be more inclusive in terms of the race. Yeah, that's what I sometimes feel. And when I speak to like um, minority race actors, mm. they also feel the same way. Right. Yeah. So, so on this point, like um, when I put out my casting call, right, I mm. at least for these uh, three films. The, there was no like race specifics yeah. yeah yeah so another thing I also mentioned to you right about casting couples yeah. you know a lot of times when people are casting couples if they have already found like a Chinese male they usually want to cast like a Chinese wife a, 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 a Chinese actor but for Zika, guy I was so amazed like you know when he called me uh, for the audition and I kind of my husband I kind of was <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> for for lumping you with Ariel I kind of was expecting ah oh, it's gonna be an Indian guy <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah but I was so surprised like wow you know like you did not differentiate and something you told me really like touched my heart like you mentioned how like even for your LGBTQ 
you you want to make content that is inclusive so even the race factor should not should should also be inclusive yeah, yeah. That, that was... i think i think that's a very important part of things like um i mean for most of us who are marginalized for different reasons right like we we can then feel for like the certain reasons that we are marginalized for but the thing is that if you just use the same um, perspective right to apply it to the other factors that make another person marginalized so for ourselves like uh, as lgbtq as a, as a gay man lah, i'm marginalized for that aspect of things but um like I, I can also use the same lens to look at someone who's like from a minority race right because i mean like i, I mean ultimately like i'm like a, i'm a cisgendered um chinese male so so um then for that portion of things like i may be privileged but uh that doesn't um like you know like excuse me for not being able to 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 have like the same amount of like uh empathy for a person from a minority race because like uh you know there are a lot of people who just brush off the whole idea of like uh, they, they they cannot accept certain things like I've been seeing a lot of like homophobic and transphobic like comments on my TikTok and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and they are just saying like, uh, I cannot accept la, like you know I don't understand that kind of thing. Like, who's asking you to ask understand? Like I I, I don't understand uh, mm. Tamil right? I don't understand Hindi right? But doesn't mean that I cannot have empathy for like an Indian person, mm. right? And and so like if 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 you if you like a you are like a cisgender like heterosexual person like, I'm not asking you to understand what is it like for you to be gay. <laughs> like you will never you never yeah. will understand like I will never understand like uh, what the minority race uh, is actually like uh, facing I cannot fully understand but what I can do is that I can empathize you know using like whatever reason I'm being marginalized for and use that same perspective to to apply it to, to another mm. person if he really becomes an aqua it's going to be very difficult for him in future how dare you use that word on your child? Then what? Transvestite, all the transgender shit? If you you do not practice like being very inclusive or like you know like make a conscious effort to 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 be uh, understanding like what the other races or like you know what the what certain marginalized groups are facing and stuff like that. But that's one. And it's worse if you start trample trampling on us. Mm. <laughs> I think that's horrible, like what have we done to deserve that? You know, like because of your own like uh, self-created fear of uh, this alienated group of people, mm. like like we are going to take away your privilege just because. Like, that's not going to happen that way. But why is there even a privilege in the first place, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did it come about? Yeah, yeah. it shouldn't have <laughs> puzzling come a, come up in the first place. Yeah. But the fact that there is, of course, a privilege privilege group in every any aspect then we should try to um equalize things i i guess yeah we, we, yeah. we shouldn't let that perpetuate for, for too long yeah, yeah. Uh, you know when you have like uh, policies and also like uh, practices um, that that is discriminatory in nature i mean like mm. just take and for example uh, yeah like, like take for example for, for for no very apparent reason like let's say for like the prime location housing uh, policy recently like it is you have a problem okay then you want to solve it then then you don't say that it's because like uh you because of like the limitations that's why you do certain things that is discriminatory it doesn't doesn't justify Mm -hmm. because like there are many other ways that you can solve an issue and to just pick on a marginalized group and and discriminate against them and like make them actually like disadvantages, right? It, it, it's, it's just like not in any way acceptable. You get what I mean? Like just because like we are in, you know like we have smaller numbers and stuff like that doesn't mean like you can like trample us like this one. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> so so and, and somehow like it's, it's really very condescending like when you are practicing this kind of things that is like obviously discriminatory then you are being like ironic about it saying like oh by doing so we are being inclusive mm. like come on like you really feel like wow your finger like your whole body turns numb when you see it, it's her it's true and i feel like if the government's doing it it kind of trickles down to the people right if yeah. they think like okay if the government does this then it's acceptable yeah yeah. yeah.
it empowers the the privileged to feel like yeah. oh they are entitled to more than the rest which yeah, yeah which is actually wrong yeah. one long angry line later let me say something like Tsukai is one of the best directors I've worked with because he managed to make me cry okay <laughs> 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 I, literally that's like the hardest thing for me to do in my acting career short acting career and he actually managed it so awesome director wanna say and, something and he, good <laughs> yeah he gave me a lot of tips on how to actually portray a certain kind of emotion <laughs> a certain kind of feeling that I didn't really I didn't really think of Put yourself in the character's shoes mm-hmm. and put yourself in that scenario. And right after that, you just you just quieten down and you just make yourself invisible. Mm-hmm. Being in a feeling of privacy, right? Then uh, right. just quiet. I think it helped that I don't have budget to have a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's always just me and my actors. I have to say, like, that bedroom like scene mm. our argument right That's what true. I felt like it just it was so smooth like I've never really had that kind of experience where I don't know I, I can't even explain it properly like it just everything was just good except for the bit of noise that we <laughs> had at, at the start but once we got like like the quietness and everything and we started shooting it, it just flowed so well like Seamlessly. The yeah. interaction flowed well. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah. Maybe except for the bra. Everyone is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, she, yeah, she missed the bra. She, she's supposed to throw the bra, but then she missed quite a few times. I was missing that, like, even in rehearsal, like, I just couldn't hit his face. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just not a pro at throwing bras. <laughs> and I couldn't catch it. <laughs> I think that was the hardest part about that scene. Yeah. <laughs> the. <laughs> The bra throwing and catching part. Yeah. So so in the end, like the, the actual take itself, right? Uh, then uh, Ben didn't manage to catch the bra. <laughs> yes, I didn't. So he he like Kavita <laughs> threw it, Kavita threw it, and then like he just fell to the floor, and then yeah. like he just pretended like he caught it. I bought the bra, but before before you all actually shot it, I I actually like wore it and, and shot yeah. the sequence that you all see at the start of the film now. Yeah. So so like if you are wondering and. If you are still wondering, like, I, I, I really suspect, like, your film analysis ability, but... <laughs> <laughs> hey, people but, are thinking that I wore, I wore the product. Yeah, I... Yeah. <laughs> that was just something funny, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if at the start you have that suspicion, but if, like, at the end of the whole film, you still think that, then, like, there's something wrong, lah. See what psychiatrist, what's wrong with him? Whether he's okay or not is for him and the doctor to decide. Come on, uh, Julie. You just need to spend more time with him. You'll be fine. Uh, on one hand, like, you know, parenting is subjective and stuff like that. But um, I think, like, ultimately, like, I'm not a parent myself. Like, neither of us are parents. Mm. But I think ultimately, like, you, you still have to, uh, you know, back your parenting with, like, information out there and also, like, constantly, like, uh, stay relevant yes correct with the information mm. out there so I think that is the thing that we really want to push for in the third film mm. yeah in bringing like you know parents into the whole conversation mm. and I, I hope there are like really some like straight parents out there who are watching this stuff la, and, yeah. and they actually you know uh, open up certain conversation uh, you know with their partner mm. on, on these things and and that if, if if people are doing so then I have already achieved my objective la, of mm. pushing out the uh, I am part three. So uh if you have not watched I am part three you can watch it in the link below. And uh if you like this video do like, subscribe and comment if you have any yes. opinions. Subscribe to okay. kind kind unclassified. Yeah. So if you are very angry with whatever I, I said, okay, <laughs> leave leave it in the comment, you know. I I totally appreciate it because it's engagement you know, for me. You know what? I thought I thought we stopped recording like <laughs> oh, no. like five ten minutes ago. Oh, no. <laughs> Since you can't I've got an elder John here. Come and pray for you.